This morning, before the homily, at the beginning of the homily, uh, I'd like you to engage in this thought experiment with me. Uh, Father Dowd is building himself a big old mausoleum at Calvary, a glorious mausoleum, one like you've never seen. St. Leo's social media feeds have gone all in for cemetery plot sales. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you can't escape there's these incessant advertisements for cemetery plot sales. Uh, after Mass today, we've got volunteers to each of the doors. Uh, and then I'll sell the old boys, they're selling cemetery plots. <laughs> it's not a message that exactly inspires confidence. <laughs> it's one that says, prepare for death. Get ready for catastrophe. Prepare for failure. Prepare for the worst. Well, that situation is exactly where we find ourselves before our first reading today. Shepherd, not the Prime Minister of Israel, God is removing him from his office. Why? Because with this threat of attack from the nation of Assyria, Shebna goes up to one of the tallest hills in Jerusalem that everybody can see. And what does he do? He builds himself a big mausoleum. Jerusalem is threatened by attack, and Shebna prepares for death. Again, not a message that inspires confidence. One that says, hey, Jerusalem, get ready for death, get ready for catastrophe, prepare for the worst. We all have found ourselves in times of crisis, when we're being attacked by some metaphorical Assyrians. We find ourselves in a time of crisis right now, a health crisis, an economic crisis, civil unrest, injustice, joblessness, two-for-one hurricanes. And we, in response to these crises, we may not be hewing tombs out of rocks, but we're certainly engaging in tomb building. What do I mean by that? Sometimes, the words and the attitudes that we respond to crisis with, they say what Shabna's mausoleum did. Prepare for the worst. Get ready for catastrophe. Prepare for failure. Get ready for death. And today our readings loudly proclaim, do not be a tomb builder in the face of crisis. So let's dig into our readings and see what consolation they offer us today. Again, Shevna is faced with crisis. He tries to solve it with alliances, with plans, and with plots. Little success. He turns everywhere but God. And finally, what does he do? He builds his mausoleum. What Shevna is saying without saying is God is not going to show up during this crisis. He won't show up, so build your tomb. We hear echoes of Shebna today. We sometimes echo Shebna today. Uh, let's fast forward to our gospel. Uh, Jesus and the apostles are in Caesarea Philippi, uh, a town named after the Roman Emperor Caesar. The city is home to an enormous temple, and recently, Julius Caesar, the deceased Roman emperor, he has been declared a god by his son, the current emperor, which makes the current emperor the son of God. Another title for these emperors, Christos, Christ. So, this temple is dedicated to Julius Caesar, the dead guy, to his son, the Son of God, and these guys are also called Christ. That's our setting. And that's where Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? He asked them who they say that he is. And before this monument to the dead Christos, Julius Caesar, Peter proclaims, You, Jesus, are the Christos. Not them. Julius is dead. His son is the son of 
dead God, you, Christos, are the son of the living God. There, Peter does not choose a tomb, but he chooses the living God. Only later will Peter see the full truth of these words. In Christ's death and resurrection, he takes the tomb, breaks it open, and exposes it for the nothing that it is. What does all of this mean for us in our present crisis, whether that be on a, a macro scale, whether that just be a personal crisis, a family one, a work one? What does it mean for those crises? What well, means we've got to leave tomb building behind? Leave behind our this is the worst it's ever been. Words and attitudes. Lately, I've been imagining God's reaction when we go before Him and say, hey God, it's never been as bad as this before. With His perfect knowledge of all history, I'm sure you could probably come up with a few examples of times worse than ours. Leaving behind tomb building means seeing our present from God's eyes. When God looks at our present, does he react like Shebna? Prepare for death, prepare for catastrophe, get ready for the worst. Of course he doesn't. So when we are tempted to absolutize our time, as the worst ever. Breathe. Take a step back. Look at it from God's perspective. And by His grace, see the opportunity that crisis affords us. See the promise that crisis affords us. God will show up. It is not the time for tombs. I don't plan on building me a big elaborate mausoleum at Calvary, not just yet. We're planning for kickoff meeting here at St. Leo, not for cemetery sales. But all too often, we engage in tomb building in the face of crisis. Today, we ask the Lord to give us His eyes, His vision, so we can see our presence his perspective, and by his grace to see the opportunity that we might have words and attitudes that it that show and inspire confidence in the future, that we might have words and attitudes 